good Lions, Tuvi, Gillespie, Hasler, Carroll, Menzies, Gartner, Cunningham. Coached by Bob Fulton, the playmaker, Cliff Lyons, and the try scorer, Steve Menzies. This promises to be a good one. Auckland conceded 12 and a half. And now they go out. Contingent of Kiwis in. Here's their lineup. Murray at the back. Hoppy, Blackmore, Rapati, Kerwin, Namu. Jones in six will play at half. Hill, Blake, Platt across the front. Chui Mavave, Carney in the second row. Horro at the back of the scrum. John Moni is their coach. Let's go to the sidelines and get his opinion on what's going to be the outcome. Steve Rhodes, good yeah. evening. Good evening, Ray. Magnificent crowd. The crowd a little bit quiet. There's about 18,000 people here. I think they're expecting Manly to play like they did in 1995. That hasn't happened this season yet, but we might see it tonight. Pity there's so many injuries uh, with the Auckland side. Should be a great game. Well, Stephen, just looking at last year in round five, uh, Manly and Auckland 26-14 to the Sea Eagles. The score was locked at 14 all with just 13 minutes left on the clock. Kelvin Jess is the referee and Ray, just before we get into this game, I'd like to send our condolences to the family and friends of Rob Robards. He sadly passed away at the beginning of the year. And Blocker, Fatty and myself all played against him in his Penrith days. And it was very sad news. So Hasler starts, Manley goes right to left. And the Kiwis will bring it off their own line. Their first set of six. Just outside the 10 metre line. They hit it now through their second play. This is Andy Platt. Oh, big tackle. Gillespie got him, spun him over. Put him down heavy. That's Mark Horro, the number 13. Now, Blake in nine. The boys have talked about this confrontation tonight between Phil Blake and Des Hasler. Hasler's arrival at Brookvale basically saw the end of Phil Blake as the manly number seven. Hopawati had to reach out and down to bring it back. Got away from Blackmore initially, who comes again to pull him down now. Horro working hard in the opening exchanges. Danny Moore comes in to take a play. And he's pulled down by Gavin Hill in number eight. Hasler now looking for Carroll. Carroll puts on a surge. Horro again, the chief tackler. Hasler pushes right one more time. Gillespie over the halfway line. And a penalty, the first of the game. Against the defenders from Auckland. Yes, Sandy Platt is disgusted there and every right to be. It was late in the tackle count. Cannot afford to give away penalties when you've done all the hard work. Very interested to see Terry Hill's first touch of the football. There he is there, just to the left of Cliff Lyons, coming back from a shoulder injury. I'm sure that John Money will be looking to test that out as soon as possible. For Manley, first penalty of the game. And Carroll used as the, the ramrod. Hasler, in for Gillespie. David put away about 28 metres out from the Auckland line. Hasler dummies to Lyons, picks up Cunningham. He turns it back. Menzies, Menzies has pulled down. 22 metres out from the, from the Auckland line. Hasler a dummy half, works it right. Carroll again, third hit up of the game for the big man. Hasler looking for a call, looking for Tuvi. Tuvi's with it now, pushes it on. Lions along, cuts out Cunningham. Then it goes out for Terry Hill. Innocent is, Innes. Innes will score, he does. Well, how easy in the final. Washer. Well, the first time Manly spin the ball wide, they get a try. And what about just some good old fashioned hitting the line at pace from Craig Innes. No fancy moves here. A good ball by Lyons, Gartner drifts across, Innes just goes, whoosh, goes straight through that gap. A feeble attempt to at tackle there by Richie Blackmore, and that's a great start for the Eagles. Yeah, I was looking forward to the centre battle out there, and Richard Blackmore has been very impressive in games we've seen him in, but this is one of his worst efforts. Backing back, they brought the extra man in in Gartner. You can see that put Blackmore in two minds, but he's still got a good shot on Craig Innes. 
who showed good speed and good strength just to burst through. Danny Moore helps, he pushes him in field. But a soft try in the opening minutes, just to start man you're after. That's an inter interesting little move there from Danny Moore because Innes, he was sort of losing his balance and may have headed out over the touchline, but Moore was there just to give him a little nudge back in to the uh, in goal area. And that all came about after a penalty late in the tackle count, which gave Manly a, a big advantage. And uh, this is the first, I think, for the Brookvale crowd. Des Hasler is the goal kicker tonight for Manly. What odds, Fatty? Well, look. <laughs> Oh, they're long odds. Come they're on. Long. They've got Come to be on. long odds. Never seen him kick before. Well, that's why career goals, none. He's got plenty of points. Well, he's got an opportunity to go past 300 career points. Tough kick. Got it away. Lovely. Oh, it's hit the upright and bounced back. Oh, he firmed in flight. Oh, he's been doing a lot of practice here. I noticed he kicked off, but he kicked off in the old-fashioned style. And here's Innes. Is he heading for that touchline? And he, I think he might have gone over. Maud gave him the big push out. Kearney. Tartuku was on in 16. John Kerwin's with it. Namu. Formerly, of course, with the Manly Club. Gone on since to represent New Zealand. Papawadi. Long run for Richard Blackmore with very little reward. A very heavy tackle on Innes. Now Carroll again. Manly four. Auckland, no score. 13 minutes gone. Gillespie. And again, the, the work from the front row is just tremendous for Manly. Seven hit-ups for Carroll, six for David Gillespie. As Cliff Lyons finds Steve Menzies. He's got support. Menzies inside the 30-metre line. He simply draws and passes. And the other centre gets the second try. Terry Hill scores Manly's second try. It came at the end of 12 minutes. And it's that combination again, Cliff Lyons and Steve Menzies. They go the blind side. We freeze play there. This player ac coming across has been too slow. Opened up the hole. Here's support on the inside and the outside. His play continues. He's got a simple choice, Menzies. He goes to the outside. Terry Hill did a good job to not overrun the ball carrier. And both centres have scored. Yeah, magic by Cliff Lyons once again. Looks on the outside, then didn't even look where he was passing. He just knew Stephen Menzies would be there as he has been for the last year and a half. And Tezza on the outside. And uh, puts it down near the sticks. And already Des has sacked himself and Craig Innes has this shot at goal now. Maybe Desi kicks on this side of the field and Could Innes the on the other side, the left footer. He's a Molly Duker. So the centres, hoping to keep it in the family, and they do that. And they've provided all ten points. Innes converting the try of Terry Hill. Manly ten. Oh. Very ordinary start. Elsgood away for Hapawate to take it to the 20 metre line, and better than that. With a scuffle up between Hapawate and Blackmore. Danny Moore cleans up the dregs. And uh, Horro says he lost it. Innes. Both centres scored the tries for Manly. Innes. After three minutes. Hill after 12. 40 metre line underneath them now. Own into the ground. 75 tackles to 53. Auckland on the wrong side of that ledger. Hasler. And now Sean Hoppy, Hoppawati in front of him. A buffeting run, a good run from one of the world's great wing three quarters. Inside the 20 metre line from Jones, on for Namu. Namu wide, there's a chance here. This is Ropati, back it goes for Namu. Got to pass away forward. 
forward pass to Kerwin. Well, no luck there for the Warriors after that fantastic run by Hoppy. They've come up with a forward pass. Rapati gets inside Hill. That's a good offload to Namu. That pass there definitely went forward. Referee right in line. I thought they bombed it even earlier than that. Gene Namu was looking for a player to stay on his outside. To, to... That's Vagana who offloaded. Phil Blake dumped on the ground there by Hopawati. Jones supported by Horro. Horro able to promote the ball. And Tartupu it is. As Auckland keep it alive through John Kerwin. 20 metre line. Stacey Jones had to scurry in. There was no dummy half. Hopawati in the field of play. Starts the run up the ground. Very good play, a long way from the ball by Danny Moore. Hopawati made the tackle, stayed at marker, and Moore from the left wing went back to fullback, saw the danger. Very good reading of the play, even though it was a long way from him. Gillespie again. Hasler with one of those settling runs. 10 mil, almost half an hour of time gone. And Carroll left the field, he'd made 11 hit ups. And his nearest rival in the forwards was Gillespie at the same time with eight. 20 metre line for Hoppy, then Kerwin. Cunningham in 13. Guttenbeel again. Tremendous effort from Andy Platt, who's left the field for the Warriors as well. 14 tackles. It's in, in front. His side in defence. Warriors now hoping to come up with some points before half time, but Phil Blake. Well, he's knocked on from dummy half. How can, that can we play on? Oh, that's unbelievable. An unbelievable miss there by Kelvin Jeffs as Kearney takes it up. 30 metres out. As they go along their back line, Eugene Namu. Namu steps around Hopawati and goes in to score a try that he'll derive a tremendous amount of pleasure from. Gene Namu scores for Auckland at the 29th minute. Well, that's one of the, the best individual tries you will ever see. And that's exactly what the side needed, but they shouldn't have got it because this is definitely a knock-on from Phil Blake. Uh, it came off the boot of Daniel Gartner. I still think it's a knock-on, and somehow, miraculously, Gene Namu has beaten the Manly side on his own. It's a very interesting one, this. It appears to go... McCracken saw winger Russell Wire over four easy points. He lost the ball and he'll score. South had a few trying, Tyron Smith one of them. Only a Parramatta error led South into the game. Fullback Scott Maher was left feeling guilty when Danny O'Keefe eventually got over on the other side. Score in the corner. A taste and South were hungry for more. Another setback though when Jim Dimmick constructed another for Parramatta. Chris Lawler's safe hand see the Eels up 10-6. It came to 16-6 not long after. Wire scoring his second with a little Dimmick magic. Oh, that's, that's freaky stuff. Good try there to Wire. The Eels had the chance to expand just before half time but failed to do so. South produced again after the break. Tyron Smith rewarded for his efforts. Tyron Smith will score. But that was the last of it. Parramatta skipper Gary Freeman got through unchallenged for one. Freeman will score in the corner. Then Nathan Barnes added to the score, but only after Dimmick touched the ball first. 26 10. Russell Wire ran in for a hat trick. Russell Wire will score again. Then David Woods for the Eels' seventh. He left the South's backs dizzy as he went over. Chris Lawler saw the Eels' winners 38-10. to 10. Brumbies, the dark horses of the Super 12, have upset Queensland and are now virtually assured of a semi-final berth. In today's other game, the Auckland Blues were too strong for Waikato, but tonight belong to the Brumbies, one-point winners over the Reds.
15,000 packed Bruce Stadium to ensure a blue mood for the Reds. ACT with the home ground advantage, Queensland with the possession. And the men out wide, but centre Daniel Herbert took the inside option to score after just four minutes. Too easy. The remainder of the first half, a hard-fought clash of the forwards. Good hit again. An ACT penalty taking it to 7-3 at the break. And that is a just reward for the efforts of the local team. In the opening minutes of the second, the Brumbies lost Pat Howard. You can hear he's in absolute agony on the ground. But continued to buck the line-out odds. Queensland not as dominant as expected. The Brumbies pack stampeding the Reds with a grit and determination that finally paid off. By no, still, going, nine. still going, It's still moving, says the referee. Foley tries to spoil. They're three metres away. The conversion taking the home team to a 16-10 lead. The Brumbies on a roll. And it continued. Their big number eight, Owen Finnegan, reading the play superbly to add five more. The Reds looking for the intensity and urgency that saw them win their last six clashes. Eels' conversion made it a 21-20 cliffhanger. A penalty in the dying minutes would have swung at the Reds' way. He's hooked it. But it was a night of the local heroes. The Brumbies continuing their undefeated run on home turf. We're just warming up here on... Now the try, the solo effort of Gene Namu. Absolutely scintillating. Yeah, Cliff Lyons forced for the dummy here and that threw Owen Cunningham out on the other side. In fact, David Gillespie was there. And then some good footwork on Hopawate by Gene Namu. This is what he's capable of, isn't it, Gene Namu? He's a fine player, and he's really carved manly up there. Let's go back to that ruling, Rose. You're the, the rules expert in, in the trio up here in the box. What's the story there? I don't, I don't profess to be any expert on this one. I was trying to explain that when it came off the hands of Blake, it went forward, but it landed on the boot of a manly player and was projected back into the air. And from that, Blake was able to get it back in again. Um, the referee has ruled no knock on because it didn't touch the ground. Namu converts his own try. 10-6 Manly over Auckland after 31. Uh, a lot uh, more interesting than it was in the opening minutes with Manly. Seemingly far the superior. The last 10 minutes Auckland have started to lay some good things together. And it's Cumray with the... Uh, well, there's this incident again. It's never hit the ground, has it? So it never at any stage hit the ground, and the referee automatically ruled tackle nullified, play on. And just reading the rule book, he's absolutely right. It would seem so. And there's been some replacements made here. Some of these players, such as Vagana, Guten, Bile, and Tatupu, the 15, 16, and 17, they've played really well since they've come on. They've taken Auckland forward. Danny Moore now falling back to assist his full back. Moore given the job of bringing it back. 10-6 Manly, two tries to one. They quoted four to one on. Here's a bus by Elskut. Elskut goes for the accelerator. He's away from the full back. Still going, a desperate dive. And Jack Elskut, he's run 90 metres. Elskut scores. Well, if Gene Namus was a great individual effort, pencil this one in alongside. Very soft frontline defence from the Warriors once again, and the speed man, Jack Elsgood, stepping straight through some awful defence. David Murray comes across, gets his head in the wrong position, and then a desperate attempt by Ivor Aparty. Looked like he had him covered, but the leg drive from Elsgood was a good one. He goes all the way, and when there's open spaces, he's the kind of bloke you want with the football in his arms. Oh, how good was that? Look at him go. Some very poor events, especially by the fullback. He was never close enough to make the dive. He had no momentum going for him. Head was on the wrong side, as Peter said. And Jack Elskud, you know, a couple of years ago, he was going to be one of the best wingers in the comp. He got a bad knock to his head, and it's taken him a long time to get his confidence back. But that'll do in the world of good, that. Beautiful photography, that slow-mo of Jack Elskud, the locks flowing and 
The yeah. face, the face straining. Beautiful commentary over the photography oh. too, Rams. I don't think we appreciate some of the camera work that the Australian boys do. Aren't they great camera on these blokes? 21 metres out, 15 in, Craig Innes fails to convert. Manly comfortable though. 14 to 6 after 34 minutes now. Jack Elsgood, rookie of the year. What was it, 94? Might have been 93, in fact it was. And a good chase in here. Money wouldn't have been happy after 15 minutes of this match. Blackmore trying to get a pass round the corner for Murray. It's play on for Danny Moore. Oh, he got a big swinging arm there and the touch shows has raced in. Danny Moore taking the ball back. And one of the Auckland players come in with a whopper of a swinging arm. And the player's reaction it might be full Blake. Let's have a look as Danny Moore is taken by... Yeah, it's, it's full Blake. Unfortunately for Danny Moore, he had his his arm up in protection that stopped the the swinging arm continuing and that's that's not phil's go either you no, know it's frustration it's, isn't yeah it? of course it is he's back uh, to where it all started for him back in 1982 as a 17 year old i think we've seen two signs of frustration in those couple of minutes here richie blackmore's pass or attempted pass back into david murray had it written all over as well as mark carroll takes it 42 out and the Seagulls looking to put some more points on with three minutes left in this first half. Kosef has lost it and Murray was off for Auckland but it's a penalty against Auckland for raking the ball out in the tackle against Stephen Kearney. And that has come from the touch judge because the referee he was calling a knock on and Kearney they won't learn will they some of these players. And Manly, they want another four-pointer before uh, half-time. They could have taken a shot for goal there, but no regular goal kicker. They're looking for four or six. Carroll. Barges inside the 20-metre line. Through from cross efforts with Gartner. Gartner's been taken high as well. I He's think off. he sent him off, he has. He has sent Gavin Hill from the field of play. So Kelvin Jeff's patience has run out. Exactly, Ray. You know, there's been a few high shots here. I don't think that's a send off of all the fence. You know, what maybe put him on report, but as I said, his patience has just simply run out. Sick of giving penalties and, and arguing with uh, Auckland players. And Hill has been marched, so they're down to 12. You had to read that one. I agree with you. I don't think it was a send-off offence. Probably looked a hell of a lot worse at the time. It's above the shoulders, but you'll see a lot worse than that escape with simply a penalty. Well, you know, Kelvin just was looking. We've got the hindsight to look at four or five different replays, and really there wasn't that much in it. It was high, sure. Give the penalty. Maybe put the man on report, but a send-off? I don't think so. Well, it's come just a matter of seconds in front of half-time. And that is going to make... You had to read that one. I agree with you. I don't think it was a send-off offence. Probably looked a hell of a lot worse at the time. It's above the shoulders, but you'll see a lot worse than that escape with simply a penalty. Well, you know, Kelvin just was looking. We've got the hindsight to look at four or five different replays and really... There wasn't that much in it. It was high, sure. Give the penalty. Maybe put the man on report. But a send-off? I don't think so. Well, it's come just a matter of seconds in front of half-time. And that is going to make this hill even steeper for Auckland. Trailing 14-6. to six, And that will be 16-6. to six as Des Hasler provides the extra two points. But quite simply, Kelvin Jeffs was operating on his fourth high tackle and his patience simply ran out. Manly 16, Murray. Not an easy task making your debut in any 
strata of rugby league, but against Manly at Brookvale in front of a big crowd. And now playing behind 11 men. That's an awesome task for David Murray. Stephen Kearney. Great potential earlier in his uh, career. As they try to tap ahead and regather, they do that. They slide the pass and it's forward. Tia Ropati was on his way, but referee Kelvin Jeffs has called it back. I really wouldn't want to fall asleep here. I know Auckland's only got 12 men. Some great skill here. This pass by Tatupu Dean to go forward, but he was in for the try, Rapati. Elskutz comes off, he's come off, replaced by Shannon Nevin. If you watch, he's run to the right of the ground. He simply had to keep running at Danny Moore, and it would have been a case of two on one. Carroll taken by Andy Platt, oh, and he's yeah. hurt the Englishman. Platt's down. This has been a great battle tonight between these two boppers, Carroll and Platt, and feeling each other out. It's about square. Everything that Carroll's given, Platt's been there to meet him with. <laughs> well, it's a great collision, isn't it? Too many tougher players in the game than Andy Platt. Got him out second best there, but didn't take him. They put together a play that we've seen before from them. And Hopawade breaks inside the 20 metre line. Pull down, eight metres out. More. Lions, Tuvi. Gartner on for Hill, and then Menzies. No try. Now, Stacey Jones has done a good job here on a much bigger man in Steve Menzies. One side of the field to the other. Menzies was odds on to score in the corner, but Jones, a big shoulder charge. Touch charge was in good position. He had no doubts. He had the flag waving very quickly. Auckland in the second play with the Ghana. 50 minutes of the match almost gone. Kearney. Blake. Yes. Jumper commonly worn by the reserves, but Daniel Gartner has the ball along the line and Moore channels back in. But Gartner, as I was about to say, with the 12 on his back. I'm very happy with that. Been very patient. And that's not easy for youngsters that have got a lot of ability to sit on the back burner and wait. If Tuvi with a minor problem, I think. He's got a cut on his hooter. But a knock on against Manly, I think you'll find in the first instance. As uh, Carroll hits the line, offloads. Just wonder if there is a Warriors knock on here. Yeah, and there you can see. Like, if Tuvi has a problem around the face, he's got the, the shin just under the knee. Man going over the top. That's where it is. What's that? The shin's under the knee. <laughs> oh, he didn't miss. I knew that he was dirty when I got him from... found that they could lead from the front last week. Well, Jeff Tuvey is a bit of a mess. We'll take a break while they clean the Manly captain up. 16-6 to 6 Manly over Auckland at the 52nd minute. Is assisted... From the field, down to the right. Good work by Holono, keeping it alive for Haslop. And now Lyons. Mark Horro. Hasler linking up with Gartner and then Menzies. And now Innes. Innes looking for more inside. Danny Moore does that. He's down to the 20, he goes back for Menzies, and Menzies gets a try. He keeps his record intact. A try in every game this year. 
20 points to six. Oh, brilliant, absolutely brilliant there from the Manly outside backs. Craig Ennis having a brilliant game. And Daniel Gartner, I think he's been Manly's best tonight. This is a beautiful ball he offloads. Menzies does well. Ennis puts the speed on, draws a couple. And then Denny Moore's also had a fine game in the wing. He looks outside and finds Menzies backing up. And it's taken a long time for Manly to score that try and try and put Auckland to bed. That just may do it. Yeah, great interchange passing. Set up beautifully by both Hasler and Daniel Gartner. Very poor miss by Tony Tatupu right there. It was just a, an arm tackle. Too much speed for David Murray, the fullback. He summed it up perfectly, Danny Moore. He looked the best position player, and that was Stephen Menzies, as he invariably is. As Paul points out, it's been a long time coming. They've dropped a lot of football. When they do control it, that's what they are capable of. 46 career tries to Stephen Menzies. That wouldn't include, I imagine, his representative tries. Shannon Nevin then. And that's what he's confronted with. A new grandstand off to the right. The kick is a beauty. Just getting over the crossbar, but the direction was perfect. 22 to 6. 58th minute. And here it is again. Yeah, Danny Moore. Going back to where Steve Menzies has supported. And don't forget, Menzies are, has already thrown a pass in this movement. He did a good job to stay alive. Desperate attempt there by Ivor Aparty was to no avail. As the restart now straight to Papawate. And he finds Solomon Himono, who scrambles over the 20 metre line. Plenty of things that have gone against Auckland in this match. The one thing that really has hurt them is the penalty count. 7-1 at the moment in favour of the home side. A lot of those early in the game, late in the tackle count, and they do really have a few chances now. It is his trademark, but Lyons knows that. Put himself in the position to take the slips catch. run out of dummy half by Hasler and then dumped on the ground by Richie Blackmore now the touch judge has come in regarding this incident involving Blackmore on Hasler oh now the other one's come in it's a summit meeting the whole board's out there he might be in some trouble Blackmore he's kicked out I don't know whether he's actually kicked out at Desi Hasler making a, a great burst up the middle it's a strong tackle Blackmore picks him up and dumps him it happens after that it happens about here yeah he's got him with a back kick yeah I've got to say Hasler had no right to grab his leg either but... While all this is going on, Jeff Tuvi has gone back onto the field. Uh, outrageous performance from him, the penalty awarded. Chris has grabbed the, the left boot. I don't think there's too much in it, to be quite honest. There's nothing in it. So this is Tierney now, and the Manly captain has gone back out there with that broken nose, Jeff Tuvey. Yeah, 15 minutes to go, Fatty, 22-6 lead, you'd be back out there. I'm not out about it. Yeah. Yeah, looking for a couple, to put a couple of tries on too. You yeah, to just get out of the shower. Cross F. Tuvey again. Lyon. Inside for Menzies and then behind Shannon Nevin. Terry Hill is with it, but the referee has called 
stopped to play. It's a set move uh, gone wrong here by Manly, just looking for the knock on. Menzies looking to pick up Nevin. Yeah. As he played again, leaving the field. Man of the match. At the end of this game, we'll receive $1,000 from Optus as Blake. Blake strolls into a gap. They hung off him. And Blake was able to score. At the same time, there was another seven, or another couple of sevens, on the other side of the harbour that were pleasing the crowds. Namu's kick is wide. So 22 points to 10. Against Sydney City, and then on Sunday, 